I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Today's epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19, 19 through 26. Hear the testimony of the Apostle Paul to the significance of the resurrection. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Today's Easter Gospel reading is taken from the 24th chapter of Luke's Gospel, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Thanks be to God for this good news. In ancient church tradition, the Easter greeting is strong and straightforward. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I really like the responsiveness of it. It's more than just answering Happy Easter with, yeah, thanks, you too. You testify to the resurrection and join the joy. You join in the great cloud of witnesses going back 2,000 years in proclaiming the good news of the gospel. And good news is something you and I and the world always need to hear and share. After I read the gospel accounts of the first Easter, though, I'm amazed that the good news of the resurrection ever made it beyond the environs of Jerusalem. 
For me, when Easter dawns, it's pretty obvious that the appropriate act is to sing the great Charles Wesley hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, and don't skimp on the alleluias. The very first witnesses, though, did not immediately recognize that they were seeing good news. The first witnesses, according to all the Gospels, were the women who were among Jesus' followers. The different Gospels have somewhat different lists of names, but the gist is the same. The women come to the tomb after the Sabbath to give appropriate and respectful attention to Jesus' body, which had been hastily put into a borrowed tomb after he had been taken lifeless from the cross. They weren't wearing their Easter hats and looking forward to brunch afterwards. They were deep in grief. But they realized that if anyone was going to tidy up the haphazard treatment of the Lord's body, it was going to be them. They were more doing their duty than following their bliss. And then they get there, and the tomb is empty. And as Luke put it, Two men in dazzling clothes appear. It's okay with me if you call them angels, since they do convey a divine message. The women's initial reaction is not exactly what you might hope for on Easter. Perplexed and terrified are how the New Revised Standard Version puts it. Reminded by the angels, the men, in bright clothes, of what Jesus had told them, and eager to share the news, they leave the tomb. And they tell the eleven and all the rest of the disciples everything they have seen and heard, and the other disciples' reaction isn't to sing alleluias either, because these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. By this point in the story, I'm starting to think that there is no way the resurrection will ever be believed. And I'm not sure whether to cheer or groan when Peter is the one to go running to the tomb to check it out. Peter, remember him? Last we saw of him, he had denied even knowing Jesus three times. The power of the resurrection, though, is so great that all of the perplexed, terrified, skeptical, amazed, and even doubting followers of Jesus come around. They didn't get what they were expecting and prepared for that day. They got something far more glorious and joyful. But like a GPS that says, recalculating, recalculating, after you miss a term, it took them a while to figure out just what the resurrection meant for them. Why do you look for the living among the dead? asked the men in dazzling clothes. Their Lord Jesus was not there. He would not stay put. He goes forward into new life. Forward into new life. Do you suppose that's what you and I are charged to do as followers of Christ? I think yes. And then I think, whoa, this is scary because I don't know exactly what that new life will look like. If I had $10 for every time over the past couple of years, I heard someone say that they could hardly wait for things to go back to normal, by which I take it they mean the way things were before the pandemic, I would have myself a very posh vacation fund. At this point, as individuals and as a church, we're finally doing some things we haven't done for a long time. Last Sunday, for the first time since March 8, 2020, we had an indoor Second Sunday Supper. It felt wonderful to gather, even in a relatively small number, and share food and fellowship with all who came around the tables. And there are so many more things to appreciate and look forward to that we haven't done yet but are planning. 
cantatas, I would hope, in months to come, plant tea and car show, but the future of the church is not getting back to February of 2020. If we're honest, we all had plenty of concerns about how things should have, could have been going better in our lives then and in the church. And not to be Pollyanna-ish about it, but at least one good thing resulted from the awful, devastating, and deadly pandemic, and that is it forced the church to recognize new and different ways of staying connected, of worshiping, and of being in the community. We will not find our future by romanticizing our past. Still, the past gives us great resources to understand who we are and who we are called to be as followers of Jesus today. Sometimes the sources of Methodist theology are called the Wesleyan Quadrilateral. Scripture, tradition, experience, and reason. Experience, living into one's faith. Tradition, the whole of Christian understanding through the centuries. And Scripture, what has been handed down to us by our ancestors in faith. The study some of us have been doing over the past month or so embodies a lot of this. Witness at the Cross by Amy Jill Levine is subtitled, A Beginner's Guide to Holy Friday. And she challenges us all to pick up the story ourselves after reading about, studying, pondering and discussing what we can know and what we can imagine about the very first witnesses at the cross. And that challenge now becomes a resurrection challenge, to pick up the story yourself from the women and all the rest. If the gospel really is to be good news, it must be practiced in the communities of today and tomorrow. And as we've printed on our church bulletins throughout this season, Nobody said this would be easy, because our community, small and local, or national or global, take your pick, is a mess in so many ways. That's actually what makes God's grace and resurrection so unsettling. They arise when you most need and least expect anything good. This week, a couple from Detroit O.T. and Julie Benson and five of their children were featured on Good Morning America. The Bensons moved to Krakow, Poland in February of this year. Within weeks, Russia invaded neighboring Ukraine and millions of Ukrainians fled their homes, becoming refugees. From the ABC website, I read, when you're staring at refugees, who have been traveling for many days and they have nothing but the clothes on their backs, you don't really make a plan, you just say yes and I'll figure it out, O.T. Benson said. It was at a church during those first few days of the war when O.T. decided to heed the bishop's call to house Ukrainian refugees in his own home. The Bensons have had as many as 20 people under their roof, some just for a night, others for weeks, you just say yes, and I'll figure it out. Sounds like a good example of resurrection faith in action to me. They have not only given hospitality to those in distress, they have found and received a humbling joy in the process, and both say that they will continue for as long as it takes. Saying yes and figuring it out. We're trying that at our VUMC, too, in our small and local way. It's been heartening, not only for me, but also, I believe, for the people in our community who have come to our events, small and constrained as they have been, including last week's free community supper. Sharing the good news of God's love, if you think about it, often seems to happen in suboptimal circumstances. Our Jewish brothers and sisters are now celebrating Passover, which observes the Israelites' escape from slavery and survival through great affliction. 
It is in no way a gentle and bloodless holiday. So this Easter and beyond, do not seek the living among the dead. Say yes to the resurrection and figure it out. Pick up the story for yourself. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Live into that faith. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, risen from death, we praise you for the changed lives and new hopes at Easter. You came to Mary in the garden and turned her tears into joy. For your love and your mercy, we give you thanks, O Lord. You came to the disciples in the upper room and turned their fear into courage. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks, O Lord. You came to the disciples by the lakeside and turned their failure into faith. For your love and mercy, we give you thanks, O Lord. You came to the travelers on the Emmaus Road and turned their despair into hope. For your love and your mercy, we give you thanks, O Lord. You come to us in our unworthiness and shame and turn our weakness into triumph. For your love and your mercy, we give you thanks, O Lord. Lord Jesus, wherever there are tears, or fear, or failure, or despair, or weakness, come, reveal to us your love, your mercy, and your risen power. For the glory of your name, Alleluia, Amen. And hear us now as we pray with all your saints through all the ages and through all the world, as Jesus has taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Christ is risen. Say yes to the resurrection, and may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit help you to figure it out.